saw in our video of the regional jet making the turn at the Baltimore VOR about all the factors to consider, but that turn used DME from that VOR. So here we're going to show you how you can make a turn at a VOR with no DME. We're uh, tuned to the Hammond VOR here, and obviously we're, we've got the needle pointing in the wrong direction, so the first order of business is to move the cursor so that the needle lines up and we know the proper direction to that VOR. And once we're lined up or fairly closely lined up we'll uh, turn the aircraft to that heading, we were almost on it, and fly to the Hammond VOR, that's our target VOR. You can see here on the map where up here we've made our departure out of the pattern and now turn towards the Hammond VOR and we can fly directly to it. No need to move over to the direct line between airports. You'll notice there uh, over on the right the Picayune VOR uh, has a square around the hexagonal symbol and it's a little hard to see because the airport itself covers up the Hammond VOR but the Hammond VOR has no square around it. This indicates Hammond has no DME. The square around the VOR station indicates there is DME. So we're uh, here we are, a little turbulent air. Uh, we'll, we'll fly this route again and I can say that pretty much in exactly the same spot we hit some turbulence. But it helps us demonstrate again when you're a little off course you fly to the needle uh, into the needle or into the split segment of the needle as in this case until things center up and as the needle starts to center you can ease back to your desired heading. Just one comment about the HSI and the King Air you notice that there are two dots on either side of the center. For a VOR each one of those dots represents five degrees from your set heading. If you were flying a localizer or ILS each one would represent one and a quarter degrees from your uh, from your course line. So as we approach the target VOR, the Hammond VOR, what we want to do is make a left turn uh, and f fly outbound on the 093 degree radial. But because there's no DME we don't know exactly how far away we are. Uh, we may have some clues uh, from other sources but here we're going to stick strictly with what we know based on the VOR signal itself. So we maintain a course directly to the VOR, but recall our discussion about the cone of confusion. This is the uh, area above a VOR when the signal becomes erratic and eventually is lost. But this cone of confusion can actually give us some hints that we're getting close to the VOR. One of the first things you might notice is that the needle starts to swing a little bit, or in this case the center section of, of the needle, the movable portion of the needle, will start to go a little left and right and may become a little bit difficult to, to uh, maintain the proper course. You've got to keep in mind that you don't want to chase this needle because this phenomena uh, is, is going to happen and so you just need to be aware of it. We'll try and move over a little bit here to the left and you can see that with a, a fairly short distance here the needle is moving quite a bit. We're now swinging about four degrees off uh, of where we were uh, and now uh, trying to bring it back it'll move very rapidly and we'll start to swing the other way and we know we're pretty close and all of a sudden whoop, it slips to the other side and we can start our turn. We know we're over the VOR and then all of a sudden the, the signal is recovered and we see that the to from uh, indicator, the triangle that was at the top pointing forward, is now at the bottom pointing down. We change our cursor to the desired uh, outbound uh, radial 093 and continue our turn to the left and since the rule is fly into the needle or fly into the segment, uh, movable segment of the needle in order to return to the desired course, we'll want to fly a little left of our setting of 093. Close to a VOR, things tend to happen pretty quickly. The radial lines are close together. You can see the needle segment is pinned to the left, so we're right now greater than 10 degrees uh, to the right of course, 
but we uh, only need to have about a 10 or 15 degree intercept angle uh, because we are pretty close to the VOR. If you were farther out you'd want a much larger angle as we uh, showed in the video of the CRJ overflying the Baltimore VOR. Here you can see the needle start to move and because you know that each tick there represents five degrees we now are about five degrees to the right and you can see that the needle is moving relatively slowly and we only have about a 15 degree angle to close so we can hold that heading until the needle is just uh, two or three degrees off our desired course and then gradually turn towards our desired course and let the needle center segment of the needle line up and settle in uh, without a, a lot of sharp turns make some final uh, fine adjustments and uh, proceed on course outbound on the 093 radial of the Hammond BOR and at this point if we were continuing on you could put the uh, the nav hold on or the VOR loc or VOR localizer hold uh, depending on what it's called in your aircraft and the autopilot will keep you on this set selected radio, in this case the 093 radial of the Hammond VOR. And we can take a look on the map of uh, the course we just took. You see that we came over the VOR from the north, so we made a left turn to the 093 degree radial. A nice gradual left turn, uh, probably at the apex of that turn we were maybe a mile and a half off from the course line. We're zoomed in pretty closely here. And a nice gradual angle back to intercept the course outbound on the 093 degree radial. This is the same as a flyover intersection or waypoint. The same technique is used exactly. So going back to our map, we'll take a look at the Picayune VOR. Remember that's the one with the DME. And we can see that we can use this to identify exactly where the Hammond VOR is. Here we're using Plan G. Other sources like uh, skyvector.com would allow you to do this also. But we're going to identify the radial from the Picayune VOR uh, that crosses right over the center of the Hammond VOR. And you can see all the way at the top in the information section, we'll bring this down for you, in the gray area that's marked QDM, that we're on the 261 degree radial about 35 and a half nautical miles from the Picayune VOR. That's uh, the information up in the top there. So we know that, and we'll move back down because when I move the cursor it changes, so we know that if we are flying directly to the Hammond VOR, we will be over the VOR when we cross the 261 degree radial of the Picayune VOR. So how does all this translate into instrument settings that will allow us to make a turn just prior to the Picayune VOR? Well, Right now VOR2 is tuned to the Picayune VOR, the needle points towards it the tail of that needle is the radial away from it. And uh, we are flying to the Hammond VOR as we did in the first, uh, the first segment. 180 knots, uh, that's 3 times 60. Remember the rule, one-third of a mile of, turn, uh, of turning radius per 60 knots of ground speed. Our ground speed and airspeed are roughly the same, so we'll use 180, that's 3 times 60, so 3 times a third is 1 mile, and we'll add a half a mile for a good measure, a little margin of error, and so we end up with a one and a half mile turn. We want to turn one and a half miles prior to the Hammond VOR, that's our target VOR, using a reference VOR, the Picayune VOR. So what we need to do is to translate the number of degrees off the Picayune VOR that one and a half miles prior to the Hammond VOR represents. And it turns out that's three degrees and we'll explain how we got that in a minute. But seeing a three degree change on that little uh, secondary uh, 
radio magnetic indicator type uh, VOR is difficult, so we're going to switch. We're going to fly to the Hammond VOR using the big green double needle. That All we have to do is see that it's pointed straight up. And we're going to set the uh, main VOR, the HSI style, to the Picayune uh, VOR. And here we are again back in that turbulent air. So we'll get things uh, squared away, but how did we arrive at the 264 radio for our point to begin our turn? Well, from a VOR, each degree, radial degree, uh, is separated by one mile if you're 60 miles away. And you saw that we're just a little more than 30 miles, about 35 miles away. So that means that each degree is uh, separated by a half a mile. At our airspeed, we figured that we, even with our little bit of margin, that we needed uh, a mile and a half uh, and since each to each degree of the radials are separated at this distance from Picayune by about a half a mile a little more actually we add in this case since we're coming from the north to the 261 direct crossing uh, radial three degrees and we set this accordingly now you notice we're about five degrees away because we're crossing that little dot and uh, when that uh, center segment, the movable segment of the uh, HSI needle, the main VOR needle, uh, comes in alignment with the fixed portion, we will be at approximately one and a half miles north of the Hammond VOR. So we'll hold our course to the Hammond VOR using our, our uh, secondary uh, VOR and watch for that center section to come into uh, alignment with the fixed portion. But when it does, we simply make a nice gentle turn. We've given ourselves a little margin of error so we don't have to do uh, too steep of a turn. We make a nice gentle turn to the left. Now, we could be switching a lot of things around trying to get the main VOR back to the Hammond VOR, but remember the rule is first aviate, then navigate, then communicate. So we'll use our secondary VOR, the radio magnetic uh, compass, uh, to guide us initially. And you see the movable segment is now in alignment with the fixed segment, indicating we're on the 264 radio of the Picayune VOR, and we'll start our turn to the left. Again, we've given ourselves a little bit of margin so we don't have to do this too quickly. A nice little 15 to 20 degree bank uh, will be just fine. And as we do this, you'll notice that uh, the uh, VOR2 is, needle is pointing towards uh, the VOR station. And this is indicating that now it's pretty much off to our right, and soon it will uh, move to behind us. At this point, the, uh, the HSI uh, VOR is not of much uh, value, so we can not worry about that and we'll keep an eye on the secondary VOR indicator, the radio magnetic compass style. And you can see that we're at about eight, uh, 080 degrees and we want to be 093 degrees so we'll stay to the right. The rule in this style to move the needle where you want it to is to pull the tail. And since the tail is pointing up at us we'll uh, want, and it's to the left of our desired course, we'll want to pull the tail to the right. And we can get fairly close. You can see that uh, you can be relatively accurate uh, with this. It is a little hard to see very small changes, which is why switching initially to the uh, uh, Picayune VOR on the main uh, VOR indicator is uh, much easier to read. But now we've got things squared away and we can switch back to the, uh, the Hammond VOR. And you see we're slightly off course, but you know, we can make a fine little adjustment at this point and uh, get ourselves squared away on our outbound course to the 093 radio of the Hammond VOR. You can engage the nav hold or VOR low hold, whichever it's called in your aircraft. And in some aircraft, it seems that there is a little bit of hunting to the left and right, similar to what find in some aircraft when you do a heading hold. Uh, it uh, kind of figures out where it is and settles in. So here you can see that we're nicely uh, established on the 093 outbound radial of the Hammond VOR and we can continue uh, on our journey. 
having made the turn just before the Hammond VOR uh, in a manner identical to the way you would execute a turn at a flyby waypoint uh, or intersection. And we can take a look at what we've just done uh, looking at the map and you can see it's flying two about a mile and a half out we have started a left turn and eased our way in small corrections and proceed on our way outbound uh, on the 093 radial. And we can uh, take a quick look again at the rule of a mile for 60 miles away. If you're 60 miles away from a VOR, each arc degree is one mile apart. If it's 120 miles, it's obviously two miles. Where we were a little more than 30 nautical miles, it was a half a mile. Since we knew from the rule of thumb of a third of a mile for every 60 knots of ground speed, we were at 180 knots, that's one mile. We added a margin, another extra half mile. And since each radial degree from Picayune is a half a mile apart or a little more at about 35 nautical miles, we knew to add three degrees. So. Here are some uh, repeat of the rules of thumb. I won't read these. You can pause, read them for yourself. Uh, I will just comment uh, that the to from indicator switch is pretty much the last indication that you cross the VOR. That's the latest uh, point where you should be making a turn. But you may get other clues prior to this like we did. and We were able to start our turn just a few seconds before the to from indicator switched but uh, still a little earlier than if we had waited. And some more rules of thumb uh, for using a second VOR to fly by the target VOR. Again, I'll let you pause this to read if you like. But just to mention again the, that it is an advantage to put your main HSI VOR indicator uh, on your reference VOR so you can see these relatively small uh, changes of angle that you need in this in our case it was three degrees and that was would have been hard to see if you were using the RMI type uh, indicator. So as always we invite you to visit us at ElitePremier.com and our website does include uh, several useful links, other good information, including some flight training information as we pointed out before. Not only the written materials here, but we also had VATSIM certified ATC on our staff uh, and some folks who are uh, quite knowledgeable about uh, programming the FMC on some of the more sophisticated aircraft and other things that might be of interest to you uh, that uh, we don't necessarily have written materials on. So stay tuned for more uh, VOR and NDB navigation uh, videos and also upcoming uh, the non-precision approach videos. And thanks for watching.